This is not the catch-all of all machine guarding. Um, it's specifically focusing on how, um, when there's a loss of and then restoration of power, like in a circuit breaker trip or a brownout, that we, machines don't restart. And you'll hear this referred to as a lot of different things. One is safe start, right? Some people brand that um, and they will use that to refer to this. Um, you will call it accidental restart prevention protection. My favorite is anti-automatic restart protection, which I don't even know what that means. Um, and then also uh, low voltage dropout. So low voltage dropout is a similar thing, but is sometimes used as a catch-all. And then lastly, magnetic switches. Someone will sometimes say a safety switch or a magnetic switch when they're referring to um, unexpected restarts. So the question is, how do you know if you need this, right? And so we're gonna start with just um, a, a simple test you can do after the call today. So again, this is only checking for the, the one kind of like subcategory of restart we're talking about, right? We're talking about low hanging fruit, not the perfect solution for everything. But in this kind of, for if you have a piece of motor driven machinery, whether it's a conveyor or a press or a bandsaw or a mixer, if it's starting unexpectedly, could injure someone, then you should go through these three steps. So you would go in, obviously you would clear the space, make sure that people are aware that you're running a test so no one's um, gonna get hurt. You will literally just turn your machine on, let it come up to speed, let it do what it does. While it is still in the on position, you will remove power. Now, there needs to be a way for you to safely do this, of course. Now, you can unplug it um, or you can turn it off at a local disconnect, right? This isn't something you would wanna do every day, right? But for this test, it's reasonable. So while that machine is on and running and unloaded, um, you would unplug it or turn it off at a disconnect, count to about two, plug it back in. See if that machine restarts, okay? So literally, that should take 10 seconds and when you plug it back in or restore power, if that machine turns back on, you do not have restart protection. And so that's a very easy test you can do that will give you just a, a high level like, oh, I guess that would be kind of bad, right? And so um, when you're kind of thinking about what machinery to do this on, there are a few quick uh, reminders and some misconceptions that I, that I often see. One is that, um, inexpensive tools have inexpensive hazards. So people assume that there's this relationship between the cost of a piece of machinery and how dangerous it is. And so if you have a large CNC system that you can climb into, people are very aware of how hazardous that could be and a lot of time and intention and money is put into elaborate control systems to protect people. But then someone, says, oh, here's a um, chop saw that we got for $90 at Harbor Freight that has no protection at all, but because it's inexpensive, we think that it is somehow less of a risk. And so I would argue that if anything, that's backwards. Um, and so to really be thinking about when we say machinery, all machinery, because the, um, the amputation caused by a $90 saw is the same as an amputation caused by a $10 million CNC machine. So really thinking about like what those machines are and then also not expecting that a new machine complies. It is not the manufacturer of a machine's responsibility to meet OSHA regulations. That is not their job legally. It is the job of the employer. And so when you're, um, you buy a piece of equipment, it may have some of these features, it may not, depends on the manufacturer. Um, for example, if you're buying something like a standard piece of woodworking or metalworking equipment, there is kind of an imaginary line around uh, between $1,000 and $2,000. Above that, and they tend to include magnetic, magnetic switches, under that, and they tend not to, right? Again, rule of thumb, but you will see these kind of like bifurcations where sometimes there, um, people, uh, these machines are safe, sometimes they're not. And the even more terrible part is the magnetic switches themselves um, are made by the exact same manufacturer as the non-magnetic switches, a, a Chinese company called Kdu that makes almost every um, power tool switch used um, commercially. 
And so when, when we're thinking about that, they look identical. And unless you do this test or you take it apart and look at model numbers, you don't know. So really thinking all machinery here, 